Right, so today's job, we've got these door handles, and they've all seen a bit, well, they're a bit worse for wear. What we've, what we've got is the springs inside them are breaking. They've got a little spring in the back, um, which over time, I've been swapping them out, because obviously there's two with springs in one either side. So when one of them breaks and does floppy, I've been swapping them with a good one, and we've got seven doors inside the house, and so eventually, I've almost ran out. They're almost all broken, so that they're, they're all floppy and they're not closing properly. So we're gonna change them anyway. I've got some new ones. So uh, I've been down screw fix and picked up some of these. Uh, these are the Smith & Lock, nice T-bar, a bit more modern looking than the brass. We've had these for about 20 years, so they've not done bad really. But the, you know, the mechanism's really, it's poor. It's a bit, yeah, it's not very good. These feel much nicer, these new ones. They've just got a bit more, a bit more to them. They feel a bit more meaty. Um, very, very similar at the back, but yeah, nice looking, bit more modern. Things to look out for when replacing your door handles. Make sure the new ones, the base is bigger than the old base, because when I take that off, I know we're gonna have a mark where the paint has been or where it's marked the door, and we want this to cover it. So we've gotta make sure that it's actually large, which this one is, it's, it's the same width, but it's slightly longer. So that's gonna cover the old hole. Also, um, these new ones have got a really nice feature where inside the bag you get with it, you get, a, you get a new bar, and the bar on it has got this split, this serrated split, and inside these it's got a little grub screw. So when we've fitted it all in, that will sit inside there, and the grub screw will go through and push this apart, which makes it lock inside the handle me mechanism there, which is then supporting the bearing, if you like, or the brass, the brass bearing in there, um, which will stop it from wearing. I say brass, I think it's actually plastic nylon on this one. Yeah, it's a nylon bearing. So, yeah, let's get these swapped over. Um, shouldn't be too much of a job, but let's have a look, see how we go. Let's whip this one off. So on this one, it's got cross-headed screws in it which are great, they're really easy to, to get out. The new one has got decorative flat-headed screws, which are a bit more difficult. You've got to be careful you don't slip off them and damage them and scratch the new handle. So when we pull that out, you've got the bar there that goes through. Now this old bar, because it's a cheap bar, you know, these were very budget when I bought them, there's no uh, serrated in them, so that just sits in there, which again, hasn't helped the mechanism over time. But say so this new one, it's, uh, it's really nice. Now you can see also another difference is how long the new bar is. It's considerably longer. The old ones, because the handles were quite short, the actual distance between, I had to cut these all down, which is it, you just slice through them with a, with a hacksaw. So if your new handles haven't got the serrated edge in them and you do need to chop these down because they're not so deep, you just literally hacksaw through them for the right length. You put it through, put it through the hole, Get it to the right way, just mark it with a pen and cut it off. These, these new handles are, are much deeper. They're a much deeper recess. And uh, you, can, you can see they're, they're about another centimetre. Well, actually that hole there comes right across to here. So they're gonna take a lot more bar inside. So let's whip this other side off. So this is the difference, obviously, this one's got a spring still, the spring's still intact inside there, whereas the, uh, the broken ones, these ones, the spring's gone and it's gone all floppy. Right then, so yeah, this new handle, and what we've got to make sure is that the, the recess inside there, where it's countersunk out, is going to sit at the bottom there. So that's pointing downwards. We'll slide that in. We can slip the new handle over the top of that. And again on the other side, get the new handle out of the packet. And we'll just make sure that it's all gonna fit. We'll slide that over and we're up tight. So the bar, we don't need to cut the bar down. It's, it fits lovely inside there. Right, and so now we've got to line this up. You can see where the existing handle was. We've just got to get, make sure we get it level and we cover up the old one, where the old one used to be. 
Now these new screws, like I say, they're difficult to start because the flat headed the flat headed screws. So the cross headed ones are far easier to get going. So what I'm going to do, little tip is if I put these into the screwdriver, these are the old screws, I'll get this where I need it to be, which is just about there, and I'm going to start the hole with the old screw. Oh, my shaky hand on. So that's where it needs to be. I'll get this one going with the old screw, because you can really push these without slipping off them. I'll get it started, then I'll undo it. And then I can get my new screw, the flat-headed one, and I can put that into the hole I've just made. And now I can do that up and it will go in a lot easier than what it did if I was trying to just put it straight into bare wood. If your old screws are flat headed screws, you could put a little pilot drill in or a bradle. If you've got a good bradle, you could spike the hole with that. Just to, you need something just to start it though. So we'll whiz that in there and get that where we need it like that. Okay. Right then, again with the second one, same thing again. Make sure we've got it nice and level. We'll put that in the bottom there, spike it in, get it started, take it out. Have another new screw, just get in that packet. Okay, now we can put another second new one in there. Same again. Let's just whiz that up. It goes in much easier when you put that pilot hole in. I'll do the last two straight away, that one and that one. I can whiz those in nicely. Obviously being careful you don't slip off because if we do it's going to scratch up these new polished handles and look a right mess. So. Carefully as we go, get them all lined up nicely, looking lovely, beautiful. All right, let's do the back ones. Now, if you've got the electric screwdriver, it just makes life even more easy, doesn't it? And what I'd do with this is the same thing again. I'd put one of the cross-headed screws in first, just to lock it all into place. All the way in with that. And now I'll swap that out for the cross-headed. So I swap that out for the for the flat-headed one. And these are far easier to get started now because it's it's obviously got the motor to help you. So uh, I'll just hold the door while I go with the. Let's see if we can go with these without actually priming the hole. So it makes the Makes life a lot easier with the electric. I can just whiz these straight in. Now I'll just take out that cross headed one for the last one that I put in. Stick his new one in, swap the end out for the flat, and the last one going in. Bingo! Look at that, beautiful. And now we can un we can do those grub screws underneath. I'm using the Allen key that's provided in the kit, which does make life a bit fiddly. It uh, it could it's got the L shape it gets in the way of the handle if I was going to do this again I would probably use uh, a 
a screwdriver with a Allen key head in it would be far easier. Here it goes up, Billy Whiz. Warp speed. <laughs> Don't take no time and it's on fast forward. Super. Absolutely lovely. They look a peach, they do. Look really nice. Yeah, I'll just give it a little wipe down with a get all the hand prints off it. Mm, don't tell the wife that's the best tea towel. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice, right, move on to the next one. Well, everything was going spiffingly well until we get to this door. And you think, what could possibly go wrong? Well, just wait and see. So, I'll pop that handle off from the inside. That's that one out of the way. We'll pull it to, we'll get rid of this front facing handle as well. Just whiz it off. These electric drivers are great. Makes life so much easier. Get them new handles on, everything looks great. Whiz it up, and then, so oh, no, not yet, Let's screw it up. Can you guess what's coming? <laughs> the tension's killing me. I just want to tell you. Oh, there's a clue. <laughs> the blooming door won't open. What a nightmare. Turns out that this new handle hasn't got quite as much leverage as the old one because it was worn and had it or it's just not quite compatible with this internal workings on this door so we've got to do something we've got to we've got to overcome the problem so this one when you pull the handle down it's just not pulling in enough it needs a little bit more we can't do anything with this. If I could replace the actual internals, which are obviously not fully compatible with this handle, or as we close it, it's really close. It's only just a fraction. So all I'm gonna do is remove the plate. I'm just gonna chop out a small amount on there and just so it's slightly deeper, and then it'll close. This is where that five minute job turns into a half an hour job. So anyway, let's get on with it. The first thing we're going to do is clean out the threads on the screw. So I'll just tap some of that paint out of there. And then we'll get the screwdriver in and we should be able to just put that plate off and that. Stand knife. And I just want to take out a little bit out of there, a little bit out of there. Also, what this is doing is just breaking the paint around the edge of that old latch there, off the old, well, the plate. If I just pulled it straight out, you guarantee it's going to crack the wood and and sp split the paint, and it's going to look a right mess. So just by scribing it around with a standing knife, it's just breaking that that bead of paint, and it's going to make that latch come out nice and easy. Is. That's been there a few years, that one. Right then, so let's have a piece out of this. So I've got my trusty chisel, I'm just going to have a nick out of that. The key to this is slow and steady. Don't don't bash that chisel in too far. Just take it out nice and easy. Just gentle marking. 
and it just all you're doing is just creating a little lip around the edge of that where we can just chisel into it to save us breaking any of the door frame away. I mean, we're only looking to move probably two millimeters of material out of this. It's not a lot. It really is that close. Just a fraction. So working from the middle outwards, we're just going to slowly now chisel away up to where we've just created that little recess around the outside. And as you get up to it, then bits of bits of uh, shavings will just drop off. So chipping in towards the edges. Just slowly working away, taking that taking that wood out of there. Just make sure we've got a good edge around it again, and then work into it. Here we go. Look. I always find if you use the rounded side of your chisel and using it as a gauge, so you don't go at it sharp edging because it'll just dig into the wood. If you go at it like that and feed your way into the wood, then you'll get a nice finish and you won't gouge it out too much. Because we're, not, we're not wanting to take masses out of it, only a small bit. Another really important tip is make sure your chisel's sharp and uh, I think this one's just a little bit on the blunt side. It would have been a lot easier again if I'd have sharpened this chisel before we were uh, laying into the door frame. It's doing the job though. Slowly but surely. And I, I think we're almost there. Don't go too mad. Don't take too much out. Oh, I'm getting carried away now, look. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh. I think that's enough. There's one a little bit more out there. Let's have a look at this again. Just make sure that's clean. back in there and run back in where the cross-headed ones because I do like them. I much prefer the cross-headed screws. Does that make any difference? Let's have a look. come back in here you can now see let's get a, you can now see the clearance I've got on that when I pull that up look at that gap now look it's beautiful and when it it's there look lovely pleased with that not a bad little job and from this side Perfect, so just do the grub screws up and we're good. This is always the thing when, when you fit in <laughs> new to old. You can find problems, you do encounter issues and it's just finding a way around it and what's the, what's the easiest way to overcome the, the problem. 
like I say, with that, I could have took the um, the latch out of the door and replaced replaced that. But that in itself gives other problems that it means it's going to be a different size. So I'm going to have to drill the, the internals of the door out, which then you stand the chance of cracking the wood, cracking the frame. Um, you know, it, it, it's going to be difficult. And even then when you put the new latch in, it could be a different size to the old one. And then the checker plate's going to need changing and that's going to need carving out. And you, you can leave, it's going to be a different size, which would then make a messy door frame. So it's, uh, it's just thinking what's the easiest way, the best way to overcome the problem we've got. And I think that, to be fair, weren't a bad little fix. So we'll just stick a bit, a bit of paint on that and uh, it will look as uh, good as new. Okay, that's the grub screws done up. So let's pull that too, just check it once more. Lovely. That's beautiful. All right, we're we gonna have any more problems. That's the question. Let's crack on. Next one. So this is the bathroom one and it's by far the worst one of the lot. It's completely gone, both sides are gone floppy and uh, yeah, no good at all. So let's change that one as well. Beautiful, and oh, diamond. Well, that's them all done. All the handles changed. Very pleased. Nice job. A little bit of a problem, but uh, all in all, yeah, well worth doing. Um, yeah. If you've enjoyed that, if it's helped you out, then uh, just drop me a little thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.